Hello everybody, this is Sakane and welcome back to Let's Play Sword of the Stars. Um, so let's talk about these independent colonies. Um, we've discovered two so far. Um, this one here uh, is Human and this one here is Lear. Um, so one nice thing is that because I've met them I now have access to the human and leer branches in the tree. Um, until you research these texts, you can't actually talk to the other empires. Um, so there's no diplomacy with the independent worlds, but you know, if I do meet the Terran Empire eventually, I could get a head start on the research here. Um, now, um, for this game, I wasn't planning on pursuing diplomacy much, but um, you can definitely uh, you can definitely be to your advantage. So, um, you know, as you can imagine, you can kind of form ceasefires, uh, non-aggression pacts, and even alliances if you've got it turned on, although I've got it turned off. Um, more importantly, though, there are texts in here. Let's just look at the Hiver tree. But as you research it, you can research um, Addict Hiver, well, I wouldn't want to do that because I am Hiver, but another race would be researching a Dict Hiver. And the higher you go in this tech tree, it basically increases the odds of getting a planetary surrender um, or even an empire surrender. Now, this is important because um, normally uh, there's no way to actually capture a colony except to make it surrender. So normally what you do is you bomb it to smithereens from orbit and then you colonize the planet yourself but if you've researched enough xenotech uh you know say i have say i'm at war with uh with the humans if i research their xenotech enough then if i show up in orbit with a huge fleet and they have nothing then they might their planet might surrender to mine at the same time i would have researched um some technology that would make for example, that would allow me to accommodate uh, human civilian populations into my empire without them rebelling or uh, uh, basically by, by uh, there's a technology called accommodate, insert name of race here, so like accommodate Lear. So that would mean that even though the Lear and the Hivers probably don't have the same uh, terraforming preferences, I could still have them in my empire and that won't cause any trouble. So um, even if you're not pursuing the diplomatic route, it can be worth it to invest in these techs once you get to the part where you're trying to conquer their empire, because otherwise you've got to raise every colony they have and recolonize from scratch. And when you bombard, you tend to ruin the environment. It's something you can bombard so heavily that uh, the planet becomes totally uncolonizable by you. Um, now, these independent colonies kind of work the same way. Um, you know, if I show up in orbit with a nice fleet, well, it'd be nice to have them just join my empire. Now, that's not what I'm going to try this game, because honestly, the Hivers have such terrible research rates that I just can't afford to, <laughs> to research this a lot. Um, so I'm just going to show up eventually and just you know, destroy these colonies. But in order to do that, I'm going to need um, cruisers with point defense. Uh, so that's not going to happen for a while. So that's why I'm not even bothering with uh, maintaining the gates in orbit there. Okay, so enough about that. So we've uh, so this guy can die. So we've uh, built all of the gates that we're going to need to build for the first part of the game. Um, that's just a statement that works for this map um, because none of these are within 13. I could build gates with tankers and send them to you know this cluster and that cluster, but I'm just going to run into whatever empires in here and. I am not ready to fight a war with them, so there's no point yet in doing that. Um, so for now, I'm just going to colonize my system, 
uh, and I'm going to get rid of these this uh, internal um, problem here with the uh, the alien menace, the alien swarm, and uh, those will be our priorities at first. Okay, so let's colonize this guy. Send him out here, which was the nice spot that we found last time. Send him, send him down there, and build more. Um, a good rule of thumb is, you know, it's okay and probably a good idea to have between, let's say, uh, well, you don't want to have more than half of your economy light blue. In other words, supporting, you know, terraforming colonies. Um, that's an easy, you know, if you've got more than that, then you're basically overextending yourself and it's counterproductive. Um, so that being said, you know, you don't want to, it's not that you don't want to have it too low, but if you're not investing in new colonies, then you're going to have slow growth, you know, down the road for your empire. So you need to find, you know, a, a good balance between the two. And honestly, that's going to depend a lot on uh, your difficulty setting, the race you're playing, uh, the map type, what kind of strategy you're going for. So, you know, it's up to you to kind of explore that kind of uh, tech path. Um, for example, um, you know, sometimes I like to have a strategy where I'll actually invest in these biotechs a lot at the beginning and try to build up my economy by just colonizing a lot of worlds quickly, as opposed to the, uh, well, not as opposed to, but because we're going to do this eventually anyways, but the other thing we're going to do is we're going to eventually research trade, and that's going to be a huge pillar of, of our economy, but we um, haven't gotten there yet. Oh, wow. Another easy to colonize, small, but a lot of resources. It's kind of a recurring theme. So that's interesting because that means that um, all of these planets have very low populations, well, except for Nizakor and Sphinx. Okay, well, <laughs> actually, no, it's still true. Most of these planets are, are very small populations, which means I'm not going to benefit as much, which means I'm going to be able to you know, build an army quickly, but I'm not going to have as much trade uh, income as I could have. Um, so that's probably going to affect my decision of, in terms of how early do I try to go for the trade tech. Um, so l let me explain trading because I've been talking about it and it might not make sense if you don't know what it is. So. Um, about two technologies, so I have to research this technology here, FTL broadband, and then after that I can research a technology which is up here, which is trading. This allows you to build a ship, which is a freighter. Um, in the fission era, you can build a destroyer, and once you have fusion tech and cruisers, you can build a, uh, a cruiser version of the freighter. Um, they uh, are kind of expensive. The destroyer for the Hivers is going to be about 40,000. The cruiser is going to be just under 200,000, I think. And um, the way it works is space is divided up into uh, kind of cubicle sectors, which I'll show you when we research trade. And as long as you control all the systems in a sector, then you can trade freely in that sector. And uh, within, so each planet will have available to it a number of trade routes and that basically depends on the number of other systems that are in in the same trade sector so probably my home world will probably be in the same sector as these other systems eventually once I colonize them and it also depends on the population so that's why I was saying 
these low population worlds are giving fewer trade routes than the high population worlds. So that's why they can bring in less trade. Um, and then you have to like build the freighters to fill in the, the trade routes. And it's sort of like a, a steep initial investment, but it pays off eventually. Um, like in some games that I've played, like trading can, you know, if you look here in your budget, right now, I don't even know, trade doesn't even show up yet, but like it would represent like planetary income here is all of my income, right? But trade could be like easily could be two thirds of your total income. So we're basically talking doubling or tripling your income uh, by going for uh, trading. So very important to get that going. Um, but we're not going to do that right away. I'm just going to finish uh, sending these uh, colony ships around. And um, get that point defense technology going so that we can start building our little fleet so that we can defend against the alien menace. All right, and another means colonizable, but this is not great because it's low resources, it's not particularly big. So we're not going to colonize it right away. Okay, we got Procyon over there. Let's send a couple more colony ships that way. So the reason I'm, you know, I could have kept on teching economy and biotechnology and trade and uh, you know obviously in the long run that's a very powerful strategy right it's kind of like um, you know if you play like uh, Starcraft or those other games right it's like uh, just focusing on economy 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 and hoping that the other person doesn't attack you and if they don't then you're at a huge advantage for the rest of the game but if they do then you're kind of screwed so um, because I have this uh, threat from the alien menace, the problem with the alien menace is that if it attacks a fragile new colony, it'll completely wipe it out. And I want these planets for later on. So um, that's kind of why I am investing so much research into getting that done. Plus, if you defeat one of them, you actually get a nice uh, chunk of money and a little research boost. So uh, the army I'm going to build is kind of going to pay for itself just with that alone. So I'm losing research time, and I'm, in return I'm getting sort of safety for my colonies. OK, since point defense is almost done, I'm going to start, s I'm going to stop building colony ships. And I'm going to uh, save up some money so I can build my uh, fleet of warships once I get point defense. There we go, we got point defense and we found more places. Ooh, so this is actually a good system to colonize. Borderline a high climate hazard, but good size, good resources, so I'll definitely colonize it. This guy too is not bad, small, but very good resources. So that's definitely the theme. Okay, we got point defense. Let's get started on our command and control. Seven turns. So actually, it's only going to take one or two turns to build my fleet. Uh, well, let's just line them. So, armor. Now, if I wanted this to be purely defensive, I would just make it maybe post fission, but I would take away this because you know I don't need this uh, uh, because I, I don't need it to travel interstellar distances. But I'm going to want to use these ships to eventually go clear out the systems where the alien menace came from. So 
we're going to design them with that in mind. They're not much more expensive anyways. OK. Um, by right-clicking here, it's going to make everything point defense. And then I'm going to turn around and make a few of them back into uh, back into Gauss cannons. And the reason is, is that this uh, these point defenses what I need to kill the uh, the, uh, the the swarms, you know, the the little drones. But to actually kill the uh, actual uh, I don't want to call it a mothership, but you know, the big thing that we saw. Um, the best weapon for that that I have right now are ballistic weapons. Um, they're uh, not immune to lasers, but they have reflective coatings, so the lasers are going to kind of bounce off it. So Gauss cannons are the way to go. Um, now here I could go for... Yeah, instead of a missile, I'm going to just double down on the Gauss cannons here. So um, this is going to be my ship. And this is really designed purely to fight the alien swarm. Um, if I was going to fight another empire, this is not the kind of ship <laughs> that you'd want, right? Because this is just defending basically against missiles and drones. Okay, so armor is done. It only costs 20,000. I'm going to want about uh, about 10 of them in my fleet when I build it. Um, but I need also to have a command and control ships, which is only going to be ready in about 7 turns. So I don't need to build this yet. So let's instead colonize those other planets that I saw. Let's colonize both of them. One of them was here, right? Yep. And the other one was this one, Aditi, over there. So I'm still just sending one colony ship out at first to test the waters, so to speak. Okay, both of those colonies seem to have worked, so let's split this in two. Send half of them here, half of them there. And now, let's see, we've just stayed right under the sort of halfway, which is kind of what I was aiming for. Um, so five turns. So, you know, it was seven turns four turns ago, so why did we only progress by two? Well, it's because we ate away at our chunk of budget that's going into research by supporting our colonies. So that's why it's important to not just expand and colonize everything you see. Um, okay, let's start building our armor ships. You can get lucky in, um, as soon as your tech reaches 50%, there is a chance of you getting the tech right away early. So if we were lucky, next turn, 
even this turn, we could have gotten battle computers. So that's something to keep in mind, um, especially with the long, uh, with the research that takes a long time to uh, research, like the fusion and the kind of uh, the tier technologies like that, like dreadnoughts or AI, if you go that route. So actually, I'm going to build two fleets because I'm going to send one uh, out here to establish the gate and, and clear out the infestation, and eventually I'll have to send it here. But as I send it out, I've got to be ready to defend against you know one of its copies attacking one of my home worlds. So I'm actually going to build two fleets. So each fleet, and this is good no matter what race you are, you know, um, you know, it might vary a bit depending on which kind of weapon technology you have, but basically with, you know, either this point defense or light emitters, you might need a bit more if you just went with green lasers, but you're going to want kind of uh, about 10, I'd say 9 to 12 you know, armors with hammerhead, right? Ships that look like this. Um, you're going to want, you know, maybe at least two. Here I have three turrets plus the mediums. So actually a lot more in terms with the uh, Gauss cannons to actually kill the, uh, the ship. And the rest should be either your light emitters or your point defense lasers or in the worst case scenario your green lasers um, so you want uh, so here I have 10 then now I just got my squadron CNC section there you go it's also going to have point defense here so see here if I don't build one, I can't. This oh, this is a new key F. Allows you to lay out your fleet. Kind of important actually. Um, but I can't do it because I don't have a squadron CNC. So maybe build two in case your first one gets destroyed. We also want to build a gate. Let's build two. Well, we don't need to build it this turn. Don't need to go into deficit spending. Um, so before we end our turn, let's pick our next research. Um, let us go for this. These are the two other economy boosting techs that we want to get. Um, right, so your fleet should be about, let's say, 10 armors, two squadrons, uh, command and control, then because we're hybrids, we're going to need to send two gates along with it so that we can actually get our mission accomplished. And then uh, you might need tankers, depending what race you are. Um, but since we've got our nice uh, super efficient engines, I think we're well within range. Yeah, so we won't need tankers. So we just need our two gates and we should be good to go now like I said I'm gonna build a second fleet just like it which I'm just gonna park you know in orbit somewhere to catch the next alien menace that decides to uh, you know in case it decides to attack me while these guys are en route. Okay, so before I send it, it's very important um, to make sure that this is all set up. What can happen sometimes is that 
So this list here is the order in which the ships are going to enter combat. And sometimes you could have your support ships be in front, and you don't want that. So uh, all my armor in front, but I'm going to additionally lay them out. Whoop. That's not what I wanted. I'm going to lay them out. Uh, I don't know why it's kind of active weird. Anyways, I'm just going to lay them out in a clump. Which is just better, strategically speaking, for fighting... Um, you know, a swarm. Um, if you don't do this, they're just going to spawn all in a line like this, uh, which means that, you know, the guy at the end can get attacked and he's not helping the fight at all. Here, if anyone gets attacked, they're all participating. Okay, we're all set and set them on their way to Ixion. Um, meanwhile, um, now, I don't actually have to build my second fleet until the last minute. See, this is the beauty of Hybers. Um, because it only takes one turn to get anywhere, as soon as you see an enemy fleet detected, you can build all across your empire, ships, you know, wherever they can be built, and then the next turn, send them all where they need to be sent. So, uh, you know, it's very efficient for defense. So I'm actually going to spend this money building more colonizers. And I think we're going to tackle our... This guy here that, you know, our first guy that we discovered. Our empire now is... You know, our economy is much bigger, so we can definitely afford now to... Uh, terraform that system because other than that well I guess we can colonize these two this one's kind of free even though he doesn't uh, give me much Okay, so let's um, let's get these colony ships on their way. Okay, so that made it safe and sound, and uh, let's just try to finish up these two technologies. timing is off, so it's not a colony trap, so that means some other random thing happened. Um, this is probably like the Herald or Asteroids or some random encounter. Let's see. Spectres. Great. Okay, well that's a random, fortunate random event. So, uh, so much for that. Let's, uh, 
I'll have to resend the gate there. Um, the Spectres is a, a random encounter. Um, they're like really, really hard to beat, um, even with endgame technology. But uh, they don't persist, so they just wiped out my colony, and I'll just have to restart. And now I will get this guy, only four turns, reduce ship cost. And now, once I've researched this, there's also this guy for economy, ship savings costs. And after that, I will have to decide, do I get cruisers first? Uh, I could start taking to fusion. Um, a good rule of thumb, I find, is once you start getting close to, you know, it taking 20 turns or less to research your next tier, then that's a good idea to start uh, to start investing there. Um, but I've got a few priorities. I've got to get trade set up. I've got to eventually get cruisers because if another empire comes, I've got like you know <laughs> Gauss cannon shooting destroyers, so <laughs> that's not going to do. Um, and I need to research fusion also. Um, so we'll think about that. And in the meantime, I will uh, see you guys later.